unto thee do we send up glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever. O Lord, save the bayous, and hearken unto us. Unto thee that readeth, and to thy spirit, we 
sick of the palsy, arise, take up thy bed, and go into thine house. And he arose and departed to his house, but when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Peace be unto thee that bring us the good tidings. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say. O Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to thy great mercy, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Again, we pray for our great Lord and Father, the most holy Patriarch Kirill, and for our Lord, the very most reverend, Metropolitan Hilarion, first hierarch of the Russian Church abroad, and for all our brethren in Christ. Again, we pray for this land, its authorities, and armed forces, and for all who with faith and piety dwell therein, and for the God preserved Russian land and its Orthodox people, both in the homeland and in the diaspora, and for their salvation. Again, we pray to the Lord our God that he may deliver his people from enemies, visible and invisible, and confirm in us oneness of mind, brotherly love, and piety. Again, we pray 
for our brethren, the priests, priests, monks, and all our brethren in Christ. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable Holy Orthodox Patriarchs, for our pious kings and rightly living queens, and for the founders of this holy temple, and for all our fathers and brethren, gone to the rest before us, and the Orthodox here and everywhere they do rest. O physician of souls and bodies with compunction and broken hearts, we fall down before thee, and groaning we cry unto thee, heal the sicknesses, heal the passions of the soul and body thy servants, the Archpriest Michael, the Protodeacon Leonid, the Protodeacon Paul, the Nanni Sophia, Cassinia, Maria, Maria, Catherine, Anastasia, Hope, Kosaro, Sophia, Hope, Nina, Mary, Lydia, Michael, Harry, Mariana, Adrian, Fotini, Luke, John, Yekaterina, Tatiana, Larissa, Olga, Matushka, Joanna, Georgia, Alexei, Theodosius, Natalia, Elena, Juliana, and Kirill, and pardon them, for thou art kind-hearted, all their transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, and quickly raised them up again from the bed of sickness, we pray thee, hearken and have mercy. Again, we pray for those who are being persecuted for their faith, especially the Christian faithful of Iran, Syria, Egypt, Palestine, and across the Middle East, that the Lord God will send down upon them every spiritual weapon to endure their tribulations, and that he will grant that peace which passes all understanding upon the region and throughout the whole world as a foretaste of his heavenly kingdom. Thy commandments to love thee, our God, and our neighbor. Make hatred, hostility, offense, wrath, and the spilling of blood to cease. That true charity might reign in the hearts of the people of the Ukrainian land. We pray thee, O our Savior, hearken and have mercy. Again, we pray for them that bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable temple, for them that minister and them that chant, and for all the people here present who wait thy great and abundant mercy. Deliver thy people from civil strife, make to cease the spilling of blood, and turn back the misfortune set against them. Lead unto sanctuary those bereft of shelter, feed the hungry, comfort those who weep, and unite the divided. Leave not thine own flock to abide in sorrows on account of their kinsmen to diminish, but rather, as thou art benevolent, give speedy reconciliation. Soften the hearts of the unmerciful, and convert them to the knowledge of thee. Grant peace to thy church and to her children, that with one heart and one mouth we may glorify thee, our Lord and Savior, unto the ages of ages. Catechumens depart, 
as many as our catechumens depart. Let us have the catechumens remain, as many as are the faithful, again and again in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us from God by thy grace. Salvation of our souls, let us praise the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, the good estate of the holy churches of God, and the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy temple, and for them that with faith, reverence, and the fear of God enter here, let us pray to the Lord. That we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. Wisdom. As always, being God, and unto thy dominion, we may send up glory unto thee, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. become man, and it's become our high priest, and it's deliver unto us the ministry of this liturgical and bloodless sacrifice, for thou art the master of all. And thou alone, O Lord our God, dost rule over those in heaven and those on earth, are born upon the throne of the cherubim, our Lord of the seraphim and King of Israel, thou alone art holy and restest in the saints. I implore thee, therefore, who alone art good and inclined to listen, look upon me, thy sinful and unprofitable servant, and purge my soul and heart of a wicked conscience, and by the power of thy Holy Spirit, enable me to impose with the grace of the priest to stand before this thy holy table, and to perform the sacred mystery of thy holy and immaculate body and precious blood. For unto thee do I draw nigh, thine, and thank thee, I pray thee. Turn not thy countenance away from me, neither cast me out from among thy children, but vouchsafe that these gifts be offered unto me by me, thy sinful and unworthy servant. For thou art he that offered and is offered and accepted and is distributed, O Christ our God. And unto thee do we send the glory to get the glory of the Lord, and 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 the glory of the
Great Lord and Father Kirill, the most holy patriarch of Moscow and Russia, and for our Lord and the very most reverend Metropolitan Hilarion, first hierarch of the Russian Church abroad, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom always, now and ever, and under wages of angels. This land, its authorities, and armed forces, and the Orthodox faith will it dwell herein. The God preserved Russian land and her Orthodox faithful both in the homeland and in the diaspora, and the Orthodox faithful of every land. May the Lord God remember in his kingdom, always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. The clergy, the monastics, those who are persecuted, and suffer for the Orthodox faith, the founders and benefactors of the and sisters of the Christ's holy temple, may the Lord God in his heavenly kingdom, now and ever to the ages of ages. The aged, the infirm, the imprisoned, those who are bedridden or absent with cold, and all you Orthodox Christians, may the Lord God remember in his kingdom, Always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Our priesthoods, priesthoods, your sacred diaconates, and all the Catholic Let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. That the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies. Let us ask of the Lord. And remission of our sins and offenses, let us ask of the Lord. Grant us, o Lord. Things good and profitable for our souls and peace from the world, let us ask of the Lord. Grant us, o Lord. That we may complete the remaining time of our life in peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. Grant us, o Lord. A Christian ending to our life. Painless, blameless, and peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Calling to remembrance our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. With one mind we may confess. Adores the doors, 
and wisdom let us attend. and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Drink of 
it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. And we call to remembrance, therefore, the saving commandment and all those things which came to pass for us. The cross, the grave, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into the heavens, the sitting of the Lord, and the second day, glory is coming again. Thine own of thine own, we offer unto thee in behalf of all and for all. Send down thy most holy spirit at the third hour upon men apostles. Take him not from us, O good one, but renew him in us, we pray unto thee. Send down thy most holy spirit at the third hour upon thine apostles. Take him not from us, O good one, but renew him in us, we pray unto thee. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed, glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all. And in my Having called to remembrance all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Thou safest to partake of thy heavenly and dread mysteries of the soul, and the unto the remission of sins, and the pardon of offenses, and the of thy For the precious gifts offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. mankind, having accepted them upon his holy, most heavenly, noetic altars, and order of spiritual fragrance, will send down upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, that we may be delivered from all tribulation, wrath, and necessity. Let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy in us, and keep us, O God, by thy grace. and sinless, let us ask of the Lord. An angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask of the Lord. Pardon our remission of our sins and offenses, let us ask of the Lord. Things good and profitable for our souls and peace for the world, let us ask of the Lord. Peace and repentance, let us ask of the Lord. Our Christian ending of our life, painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask. Having asked for the unity of the faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. with boldness and without condemnation, we may dare to call upon thee, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say,
his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us thou thy servant depart in peace, O Master, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen my salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. A light of revelation for the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people, Israel. When the fear of God and the faith in love draw I believe, O Lord, and I confess that thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Moreover, I believe this is truly thy most pure body, and this is truly thine own precious blood. Wherefore, I pray thee, have mercy on me, and forgive me my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, in knowledge and in ignorance. And vouchsafe me to partake without condemnation of thy most pure mysteries, unto the remission of my sins in life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, receive me today as a communicant. For I will not speak of the mystery to thine enemies, nor will I give thee a kiss as did Judas. But like the thief do I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. Let not the communion of thy most pure mysteries be unto me for judgment or condemnation, O Lord, but unto the healing of soul and body. Amen.
people and bless thine inheritance.
and keep it so gone by thy grace. Having asked that the whole day may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless, let us commit ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. sanctification and unto thee do we send up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, in two of the gospel readings that we had for today, one of which we heard for the Sunday, the other of which was dedicated to St. Philip, Metropolitan of Moscow, which we did not hear in church, Christ speaks in different contexts, but of the same thing. He speaks of what it means to know the Son of Man. And this phrase, and in particular the verb to know, is something that I think, dear brothers and sisters, we as Christians don't necessarily stop to think about as often as we might. Certainly not enough to inform our spiritual lives. We live in an age that is dominated by rationality, that is dominated by the mind. And so when we hear the verb to know, as Christ said to the man who was sick of the palsy, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. What, dear brothers and sisters, do we think when we hear him say this, that you may know that I am the Son of Man? We may be tempted to think of this solely in terms of knowing with our mind, or that they knew with their minds, by witnessing what he had done, that he was the Son of Man. But there's a deeper meaning, dear brothers and sisters, to the verb to know as well. And perhaps we should take a moment to think of it in this context. To know also means to have direct experience of, or to participate in. This sense comes through much more clearly in the Greek than it does in the English. Partly because the Greek is more expressive, but partly as we were talking about a moment ago, because we tend to see the world in terms of what our senses can perceive, in terms of what our minds can cobble together, in terms of what is demonstrable to us in terms of the simple five senses. And this is but a pale, pale imitation of the reality, the spiritual reality that Christ is imparting to his disciples and to those who were witness to these miracles. In the Gospel of St. John, which I mentioned earlier, which is dedicated for St. Philip, Metropolitan of Moscow, Christ says, but that ye may know the Son of Man. And he goes on to say that you might know him as the Son knows the Father, and as the Father knows the Son. This, dear brothers and sisters, is the fullness of what it means to know to directly participate in, to come into contact with. What does this mean though for us as Christians? This means that it's not enough for us to meditate on God. This is helpful, don't get me wrong. 
and it is something that we should do. But this should not be the fullness of our spiritual life. Meditating upon something is not the same as encountering something. We know that the means by which we come into contact with God is not inside of our heads, but rather it dwells within our hearts. The fathers of the church made this choice intentionally, seeding our noetic faculties, the noose, that which apprehends God in the physical organ, as well as in the spiritual heart. They were one and the same for them. And this is something that we often forget as well. It is not merely our minds that participate in worship. It is not merely our spirits that participate in worship. It is the fullness of our being. So when we hear the fathers of the church speak of the heart in spiritual terms, we may be tempted to limit this to spiritual terms. But they are indeed speaking also of the physical heart. And what they are telling us is that just as Christ fully participated in our humanity and thus gave us a pathway to being raised up with him, so our physicality also participates in worship of him and ultimately in salvation. And this has a direct bearing upon how we live out our spiritual lives. Our spiritual lives are meant to involve, again, the entirety of our being. Worship is not merely spiritual, it is sensual. In the original meaning of that word, that it involves all of our sensory organs in addition to our minds and in addition to our emotions. All of us needs to participate in order for all of us to ultimately be saved by God. And dear brothers and sisters, this means that we fast. This means that we do not excuse ourselves and say this is something from a bygone era. This is perhaps more relevant to us today than it was in the time of Christ. Everybody lived in relative want in Christ's time. We live in an age of abundance. And so for us as Christians, it is even more essential that we learn the ascetical side of the spiritual life, that we learn to deny ourselves the things that we want, and for a time, the things that we need as well. In this way, we tame the body, yes, but we also bring the body into subjection to God. It is necessary for us to pray, and not merely with our hearts or our minds, with our bodies as well, which means that we should be standing in our prayer corners, which means that we should be engaging in prostrations when the church calls upon these things, because these physical expressions bring our physical being into communion with God. They bring our bodies to the point where they too may know God. And this may sound strange to our modern sensibilities, to our modern ears, but our bodies are called upon to know God in the same way that our minds and our hearts are. Dear brothers and sisters, this means that we do not cut ourselves any slack. We are called upon to fast as we are able to fast. And this may mean that not everybody is capable of keeping the fast in all of its austerity. But all of us are capable in keeping the fast in some measure, and we should be. How many of us can stand in line to receive concert tickets for ourselves or for our children? How many of us can wait by the phone in order to try to win tickets to the football game that we really want to go to? We can deny ourselves when it's truly something that we want. And so the question becomes, ultimately, do we want Christ enough to do these things? Do we truly want to encounter him enough that we are willing to set aside the lesser in order to be given some measure of the greater? This is all what it means to know God. It means to participate in him. There is within orthodoxy the concept of synergy. And lest you think that in any measure I am saying that our efforts save us, Please, that is not what I am saying at all. There is nothing that we can do to merit salvation. But we do participate in salvation. We make the decision whether or not we want to receive that great grace which God always extends to us. And when we make the decision, hopefully, that we desire that grace enough to do these things that we might truly know God, then the conduit opens, the switch is thrown and we receive even more God's grace in abundance. 
May God grant all of us not merely to know about God. This is a good thing. And for many of us, this is the beginning of our journey to Christ, is learning about God, what the church teaches us about God. But this is a pale imitation in much the same way that reading about a vacation spot brings us only the image, but not the reality. It does not bring us into contact with that spot. It is only by going and encountering it that we truly come to know that spot. This is true of our spiritual lives as well. Christ was saying to the crowd and to the man that was sick of the palsy, you have come into contact with the living God. You have not just seen with your eyes. You have not just experienced in a way that your mind can come into comprehension of, but you have participated in my divinity. And this may sound strange as well, because many of these people we know turned away from God. But in that moment, they experienced him. In that moment, if only within the deep being, they knew that he was God. This is what all of us are called to. We may not be able to witness directly his miracles, but we have been given 2,000 years of church history and all of creation as an example from which we might learn. May God grant us to seek not the things which are superficial, but may God grant us to seek evermore the things that are deeper. May God grant us to know him with every fiber of our being, so that every fiber of our being might be deified, might be sanctified, might be saved. It is said that God became man so that man might become God's. Think about this, dear brothers and sisters. What does this mean for us? God came down to where we are so that if we desire it enough, he might reach out his hand and we take that hand. And having taken that hand, he might lift us back up to where he is. <coughs> Who among us wants to reject that great gift? Now knowing this, what do we do with that? Do we desire it enough to get off of our spiritual backsides and do something about it? This is what Christ puts in front of us with every variable. He gives us the lesson. The question remains, do we love him enough to actually learn it? May it be so for all of us, to our salvation. Amen. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. of his most pure mother, the holy glorious and all praised apostles, of the holy prophet, forerunner and baptist of the Lord John, of our father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, of our father among the saints, John Archbishop of Shanghai and San Francisco, the wonder worker, of the holy martyr Hyacinth and <coughs> St. Philip, Metropolitan of Moscow, and of all the saints we commemorate this day, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Donna, and of all the saints. Have mercy on us to save us from his good and the lover of mankind. Amen.
preserve them for many
purify, cleanse, and adorn me. Make me comely, give me understanding, and enlighten me. Show me to be the dwelling place of thy spirit alone, and no longer a habitation of sin. That from me as then abode to the entry of communion, every evildoer, every passion may flee us from fire. As intercessors I can offer unto thee those saints, those commanders of the bodiless host, thy forerunner of the wise apostles, thine undefiled pure mother, whose entreaties do thou accept, O my compassionate Christ, and make thy servant a child of light. For thou alone art our, our, our sanctification, O good one, and the radiance of our souls. And unto thee as God and Master, we also implore as we meet every day. O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, may thy holy body be unto me for life eternal, and thy precious blood for the remission of sins. And may this Eucharist be unto me for joy, health, and gladness. And at thy dread second come and vouchsafe me a sinner, who stand at the right hand of thy glory, for the intercession of thy most pure mother and of all thy saints. O most holy Lady Theotokos, light of my darkened soul, my hope, protection, refuge, consolation, my joy. I thank thee that thou wilt save me, who am unworthy to be a partaker of thy most pure body, and of the most pure body and precious blood of thy Son. O thou who gavest birth to the true light, do thou enlighten the spiritual eyes of my heart. Thou who gavest birth to the source of immortality, revive me from dead in sin. Thou who art the lovingly compassionate mother of the merciful God, have mercy on me and grant me compassion and contrition in my heart and humility in my thoughts, and the recall of my thoughts from captivity. And thou save me even unto my last breath to receive without condemnation the sanctification of the most pure mysteries for the healing of soul and body, and grant me tears of repentance and confession. Let it make him and glorify thee all the days of my life. For blessed and most glorified art thou unto the ages. Amen. Now thou, now let thou thy servant depart in peace, O Master, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all peoples, a light of revelation for the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people, Israel. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit both now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, blot of our sins. O Master, pardon our iniquities. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in the heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Rays shining forth from thy mouth like a beacon hath illumined the universe, and exposed to the world treasures of uncovetousness, and shown us the heights of humility. But while instructing us, us by thy words, O Father John Chrysostom, intercede with the word Christ our God to save our souls. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. From the heavens hast thou just received divine grace, and by thy lips thou dost teach all to worship the one God in Trinity. O John Chrysostom, all blessed righteous one, rightly do we claim thee, for thou art the teacher, a teacher revealing things divine. Both now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. O protection of Christians that cannot be put to shame. O mediation unto the Creator unfailing. Disdain not the suppliant voices of sinners, but be thou quick, O good one, to help us who in faith cry unto thee. Hasten to intercession, speed thou to make supplication. Thou who dost ever protect us, thou goest then, that I am thee. Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. More honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim, who without corruption gave us birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos thee do we magnify. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy 